This is the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast, Episode 28. Ho, ho, ho! 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 Sounds great! Hello, and welcome to this episode of the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast. My name is John Melly, and this is the podcast dedicated to teaching in-depth and advanced marketing strategies for people in the voiceover and audio production professions. My goal is to help you make more money by showing you ways to leverage your time, charge more for your talents, and allow you to spend more time doing the things you want to do in your life. Hey there, it's John. Welcome to this episode. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I do appreciate it. If you are in the United States, I wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. It's probably... One of my favorite holidays of the year, and uh, the reason for that is the intent of it is just to stop and be grateful and give thanks for all that we have, and uh, I have a lot to be grateful for, particularly this Thanksgiving. Several people that I know have lost loved ones near this time of year, and my heart goes out to them as they go through this very painful time in their lives. And I think sometimes the holidays make it that much more poignant because holidays are a time for family to gather together, and that's where memories are made. And so I am I am very fortunate and blessed to have everyone in my family with me this year, and uh, I hope that you have a, a wonderful and thankful and peaceful Thanksgiving holiday, and if you're anywhere else in the, in the world, I wish you peace as well as we come into this holiday time of year. Just so much to be thankful for. I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about that. You know, I couldn't do this podcast without the love and support of my beautiful wife, Anne, and the encouragement of my family, and obviously, you, the listeners, you know, we've had over the course of time since this podcast was first launched about a year and a half ago, maybe a little longer, there have been 19,144 downloads from 68 different countries around the world. So thank you. Uh, this, it's been an exciting journey. Do me a favor. I asked for this in the last episode too. Send me a selfie of you listening to the podcast, wherever you are listening to the podcast, but don't do it if you're in the car driving. Uh, if you're in your studio or you're out and about or you're with friends or family or you're at an event, someone sent me a picture from a sporting event. I think he was at his son's basketball game. Someone was out walking her dog and she sent in a, t- a picture on the Facebook group. So do that. That'll be fun. It'll be uh, fun for you to share it with the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast Facebook page page, or you can tweet it to me on Twitter at at John Melly. That's M-E-L-L-E-Y. It'll be a lot of fun, and it's all part of our growing community here. I want to thank everybody who's recently joined the Voice Over Marketing podcast group on Facebook. I really try and send a message of thanks to everyone who joins. I ask how you found out about the group. So, Thanks for joining, and share it with your friends and colleagues in the voiceover or audio production family, the world, you know? So I have so much I want to share with you. This this episode has been kind of building up. I It's been so busy the last few weeks here in the production studio because it's Thanksgiving week here in the United States, and we're here Monday through Wednesday. I'm recording this Wednesday afternoon after I've finished up the production for the next week because I don't want to come in on Thursday and I don't want to come in on Friday and I don't want to come in on the weekend. You know, I want to spend that time with family. So from Monday to Wednesday of this week, we produce eight days worth of commercials. Now, because it's a short week, we've got that going on. But on top of that, it's Black Friday on this Friday. Black Friday means that the stores finally get in the black. You know, their budgets, they're in the red all year, and it's the Christmas season where all the shopping and all that kind of stuff, the gift buying and everything like that, finally puts them in the black on their balance sheet. That's where the term Black Friday comes from. And so that's why we call it Black Friday here in the U.S. And it's 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 mayhem. <laughs> in some parts, I, I don't participate. I have extracted myself from that. I personally believe that families should be able to spend Thanksgiving Day together and not have to rush through their festivities in order to be up at 3 o'clock in the morning to go work at some shop. 
That's my personal opinion. People get those jobs and they know what those entail. I understand that. But I think there's value to having family time and spending that time with friends and family. You know, we have 365 days out of the year. I think somewhere in between, you know, between now and Christmas, it's a month away. Uh, Hanukkah's coming up. That's a few weeks away. Uh, Kwanzaa, if you celebrate that, that's right after Christmas. So between now and then, I think there's a few hours you probably could carve out to buy some nice presents for people that you want to give gifts to. Uh, Three o'clock in the morning on Friday seems a little bit much for me. I'm going off on an unintended tangent right now, but that's my that's my opinion. And I'm all for making money and 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 running a business and capitalism and all of that. But I, I, I <laughs> there's more to it than just making money and, and stuff like that. You know, there, there's a cost to everything. And I think sometimes we we're too quick to give up the family time in exchange for a Nintendo at a really good price, you know. And particularly with what I made reference to before, I've, I have some people that I know who have lost loved ones right around this time, and you know, in the grand scheme of things, I'm sure they'd rather have those people with them on the holidays than making sure they get a really good deal. Let's keep it in balance. I think we're missing on the balance. Does that make sense? Anyway, um, thanks for listening. <laughs> I, I'm kind of working without a net today. I have some bullet points. I've been wanting to do this episode for like two weeks. And it ju- I just had to keep pushing it back and back and back until I've had a, a little bit of time here. And so I have this. And I'm, I'm going to do this without a lot of editing. Sometimes I do some post-production on this show. But I'm going to try and just get this out there and uh, so that you have something. Because I have a lot of things I want to share with you. Some really good stuff. And I mentioned I'm grateful for a lot of things. And I, I'm, I'm grateful for this podcast. And I'm grateful that this podcast was nominated for an Outstanding voiceover podcast at the 2014 Voice Arts Awards. Now, the ceremony was held November 9th in New York, and the winners of this category were Chuck Duran and Stacey J at VO Buzz Weekly. And they have a great show. They totally deserved to win this category. So, my congratulations go out to them. It was a great show, and it was really an honor to be put in that league with them as a co nominee. So, you know, my hat is off to them. But the whole experience of the of the Voice Arts Awards was great. And then there was a conference the next day. It was called That's VoiceOver, and that's put together by Rudy Gaskins and Joan Baker. And I, I really want to encourage you as a voice actor to go and attend conferences. I have talked about going outside your market and doing things outside the voiceover community, and I think that's great, and I think you should do that. And I think you should go to a voiceover conference as well. Because I have to tell you, it was probably one of the most affirming things I've done for my career. Not necessarily because of the content, which was great, but because of the opportunity that the conference offered attendees. And let me tell you about my experience. And some of you may have seen some of the posts and the pictures that I put on Facebook in the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast group on Facebook. And they had this thing called the Audition Spotlight. And it was a, an audition to do a promo for the Travel Channel. It was basically an open audition to anyone who attended That's VoiceOver. Candidly, I was more wrapped up in the nomination for the podcast, which was the night before. And I was originally going, eh, I don't know if I'm going to go to That's VoiceOver because it would have been time away from the studio and all that kind of stuff. And then I said, you know what? I bought the ticket. Let's play. So I signed up for That's VoiceOver, the conference, and pretty much was ready to go. But my mind was on the nomination of the podcast for the the Voice Arts Awards the night before. And I really wasn't aware of the audition spotlight. Well, I got either an email or I saw a post that said that the deadline for submitting your initial entry for the audition spotlight had been extended for 24 hours and it needed to be submitted by 11:59 p.m. eastern time that night and i was like oh okay you know still my mind was wrapped up in the podcast nomination 
And I was wrapping up work here, and then I came across the email or the post one more time, and I said, you know what? You're going. Throw your hat in the ring. It's not going to cost you anything. Just do it. So I printed off the script. I went through it. I you know, read through it, made some notes, and then I performed it a few times, and then I picked the one that I liked the best, and I sent it in. And about three or four days later, or maybe a week before the event, I received an email saying that I had made it to the final round of 40. So I think there were like 270 submissions, and the it had been narrowed down to 40. And I was like, oh, cool. Now what? <laughs> well, then I found out that part of that's voiceover. One of the events was going to be another round of auditions. And they were going to take those 40 people, and you had to be present, and narrow it down to six. And then those six finalists would go and perform an audition live on stage in front of the audience, in front of everybody who was attending the conference, and another panel of judges. I was like, oh, okay, this is interesting. So I get there and I find out, and it's like 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Monday, and we're going to be doing this audition. And the space that we were going to be doing this audition in was kind of funky. It was it was not a studio. It was like this picture of a school cafeteria with white walls and white tiles and white ceilings. And the way that they broke up this big room into different sections was they pulled these curtains. It looked like big shower curtains and that, that were on tracks in the ceiling. And they would pull the curtains around to break it up into different areas. <laughs> in one section, they were doing this thing called uh, speed dating for your demo. And so 20 people had been pre-selected. They had, must have submitted their demos uh, for review. And then those folks were narrowed down to 20 people who would meet, sit down with some judges and experts in the voiceover community. And they would, it would be an opportunity for those experts to listen to a demo, provide you with feedback, and then you'd move on to the next person, you know, a speed dating, and move on to the next person, they'd do the same thing. And it was a really good opportunity for people to get a whole bunch of feedback on their demos in a really short period of time. And I imagine it was an opportunity for, to see if there were some consistent themes and comments that started to evolve so that you could really fine-tune your demo. I think that would be a really good opportunity. So that was going on behind one curtain. And then the 40 people were, it actually turned out that 35 of us were actually there. So the 35 of us were broken up into groups of two, and we were to go into this other area with a curtain around it. And <laughs> there were going to be two tables set up, one on one side of the room, one on the other side of the room. And one table would have a couple of judges, and the other table would have a couple of judges. And the two of us would go in and audition at the same time. No walls, no microphones, no copy stands, no nothing. Just a whole lot of noise all around us and somebody else behind you performing the same copy. So you really had to go in and focus and tune everything else out and put your game on on that piece of copy and give it all you got. And you had one shot at this thing. And, you know, you're just standing literally in front of these two judges with maybe a half a table's width between you. <laughs> that was kind of funky. You know, you start to think about, you know, it gets in your head. It's like, oh, wow. You know, that whole dynamic about auditions and there's the cattle call and you're there with all these other people who are vying for the same thing and everybody's smiling at each other and wishing each other well and also at the same time thinking, boy, I really hope I win. <laughs> you know, and so I started to look at the copy and I kind of went off into this corner and started making notes on the copy. And I'm going to I have something for you if you go to I'm going to make a, a link available. I'm making a PDF available of my performance notes on those scripts. There were two of them. And you can go and see my script analysis. And what I've done is there were a whole bunch of arrows and squiggles and marks and all that kind of stuff and lines that I put on the sheet that were cues to me on how I was going to approach this script. Now what I've done is I've taken that, I made a PDF of it, and I've written captions and drawn arrows that explain what all those little squiggles and lines mean. And if you would like a free copy of that, 
just go to this episode. I'll give you a link, and you can just click, give me your name and your email address. I'll, I'll send it to you free. That's it. You can have it. You can look at it, and you can see my script analysis. Look for that link on the show notes for this episode, episode 28. So anyway, getting back to this experience. So we're all there, and I'm trying to manage the nerves, the stress, the pressure of this thing. And I'm, I'm trying to keep myself up and stay positive because, you know, there's that little voice. And I'm being perfectly candid with you. I have moments of self-doubt. It's like, oh, I really hope I don't crash and burn. <laughs> and then I said, no, 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 no. Turn that 180 degrees around. You can devote the same energy to worrying and visualizing a self-destructive path. Or you can turn it around and you can visualize success. And I had an experience with my trainer, my physical trainer, you know, my coach, a couple of weeks before this whole event took place. And I'd, I will admit I have been struggling a little bit in my training. Uh, you know, I kind of regressed a little bit. I'd had an injury in my foot and I was trying to make it better. And, you know, so I was kind of down on myself a little bit. And I was sitting on the back steps of my trainer's studio and we were discussing the whole thing. And he watched me and there are moments in your life where little nuances, little coaching, little comments and constructive points are given to you that really stand out. And I'm sitting there and he put his hand on my back and my trainer is Mandla Nkosi and uh, you can listen to our interview. He's been on this podcast. He was on episode 16, The Goose That Lays the Golden Egg. So you can hear about our conversation about the concept of the voiceover athlete if you have not listened to that. But at any rate, what he did was he put his hand on my back and he pushed it because I was kind of hunched over and he pushed it in so that I would be sitting up straight. And he said, John, there's a posture for everything. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret that will help you with your peak performance. Are you ready? Okay, so there have been studies that have proven that your posture will affect your mood. And if you're about to go into a high-pressure situation where you need to perform at a higher level, and if you need to get some more energy and build up on this thing, there's a posture for that. And if you stand up and you put your arms apart, almost like you're crossing the finish line of a race, let's say you're running a marathon or you're running a, a race, and you're coming down the, the track, and there's the finish line right in front of you, and you break through it, and you put your arms apart. If you stand there with your arms apart in an upright posture, they have done studies where your cortisol levels drop. That's the stress hormone. That drops. I don't know the percentage off the top of my head, but it drops it's a measurable drop in cortisol and a measurable increase in testosterone, both for men and women. And what that does is it gives you a little bit of an energy boost for pressure situations, and it gives you a little bit more of an edge for your performance. So I was standing there, and I was doing some of my mobility drills and some range of motion drills, and I just stood there. And all it takes, by the way, is just a couple of minutes of you holding this pose and you will trigger that chemical change within you. So if you're going to go for an audition, find a space for yourself, stand there, put yourself in a position where it looks like you're crossing the finish line. Now, the interesting thing, and I'm digressing, but it's important. This is a very natural pose found in nature. If you look at other primates, uh, you're, you're saying, I thought this was going to be about voiceover. It is. It's about this podcast is all about peak performance and every little edge we can give you. I'm going to give it to you. So uh, if you look in primates like gorillas, apes, chimpanzees, whatever, if they're victorious, you know, the whole chest thumping thing where they pound their chest or if they and they spread their arms apart in victory. You know, if you've ever seen a box 
boxer raise their hand as a champion or some of the, like I said, crossing the finish line, anybody who exhibits a, a victory, you know, even skiers where they're competing against themselves, like, uh, you know, the uh, ski jumping or something like that. They get up and they throw their hands up in the air or out to the side. Uh, Michael Phelps, when he comes up out of the pool, he's raising his fist in the air, you know? That's a natural pose, and it's found in nature, not just in human beings. And the interesting thing is, is it's a natural, instinctive pose when you're, you're feeling some kind of victory or triumph. Because blind people who have never seen that image do the same thing. They do it naturally. And so they've never seen that behavior so that they're not able to imitate it. You know, they don't have a visual cue to imitate that posture, pose, behavior, whatever it is you want to call it. So it's a natural pose for us. So if you're going into a high pressure situation or you need to get a good performance out of yourself, give yourself a couple of minutes. It's all it takes. Go off to the side. And stand there like you're crossing the finish line. And you're going to say, I own this thing. It's mine. And, and you will perform better. So I did that. And I walked right in there. And my judges were Chuck Duran and Dave Walsh, who is the voice coach out in California. I had a great conversation with Dave. And we're going to have him on this podcast. So I'm looking forward to that. And I got through the performance, and they didn't know me beforehand. They didn't, but I uh, stood there, performed, and got through it. And they both said, "Great job, man!" <laughs> and I was like, "Well, thank you." You know, they asked me if I was from Bo- where I was from. I told them I was from Boston, and they said, "Wow, you, not a trace of your accent came out." I said, "Well, thanks. I've been working on it." <laughs> but at any rate, uh, I got through that, and I felt really good. And I thought. I think I've made the final six. I don't know. It's too early to tell. So that's at 4 o'clock. And at 5.30, 6 o'clock, Alan Coulter from The Late Show with David Letterman, he's the announcer for The Late Show with David Letterman, he's the MC for the final two panels and also the MC for the final competition for the six finalists. So there's a, a, a panel on and they're talking about voiceover and then another panel comes up and I must admit that my adrenaline was going on a pretty low level burn for most of the day and I started to fade in between the two panels and I'm sitting there going oh dude wake up you need to be up for this in case you make the final six well lo and behold there were six panelists And they were going to then be the coaches for the six finalists. The people were Frank Rodriguez, Joe Cipriano, Cedaring Fox, Nicole Roberts, Laurie Allen, Dave Fenoy. I mean, really (laughs) big names. And they were going to be our coaches. So they get through the second panel and they announce the finalists. And they called my name. And I was like, oh, wow, I made it. So we go out the door, they hand us a new script, and (laughs) we literally had maybe five, ten minutes to work with our coach. Anne had been out. She went to the museums during the day. She didn't attend the, uh, the, the conference with me, but she went to the restaurant across the street from this museum where this event was being held, and she saw me come out and just at the right time, and she said, do you want anything to eat? I said, no. Um, I said, but if you have some water, that'd be great. She says, here you go. She handed me a water. She's always got water. And so she hands me a bottle of water and I'm drinking that thing because my I had cotton mouth at this point. So my coach was Frank Rodriguez and we went off to this corner and we started working through the thing. And again, you can go and see my notes and, uh, and I've put together an analysis and a breakout of what all those squiggles and lines meant to me when I got up and performed. And so... We got through the thing, and I was contestant number four, and (laughs) Alan Coulter is the MC. Joan Baker is there kind of helping us through our paces there. She's kind of telling us what to do, where to stand at the mic, what to do, slate our name, and all that kind of stuff. And the judges, (laughs) the judges are Trish Scanlon from the Travel Channel, Pat Fraley, 
and Jeffrey Umberger from the Umberger Agency. And the grand prize was a paid booking with the Travel Channel to do a promo at some point in 2015, a year's contract with the Umberger Agency, and the Neumann 102 microphone, which is what we were using when we were on stage. They called your name. You stood up, went up, slated your name, take one, perform the script, and then step back from the mic and... The judges, Trish Scanlon, Pat Fraley, and Jeffrey Umberger, would make notes, and they would critique your performance and, and say, okay, we like this. Maybe you could provide a little more contrast between this and that. Make it a little more fun. Um, open it up a little bit more, you know, uh, that kind of thing. Or here's the pronunciation of the guy's name. <laughs> and so you were to take those notes and do it on the fly, put that in and incorporate it, and then you stepped back up to the microphone and said, take two, and went through it again. You got two shots at it, and then you sat down. And I didn't win. Monique Coppola did, and she was fantastic. She, I had an opportunity to listen to her performance again afterward, and it was spectacular. And I, can, I know the sound the Travel Channel wanted, and they got it with Monique, so congratulations to her. But for me to stand up there and from 270 submissions and make it to the final six and stand up on stage in an unusual audition setting, you know, you're before some judges, Now, you're always in front of a judge when you're in front of a client and an agency and all that kind of stuff. But this was different. And then you have the top names, the top performers in voiceover sitting in the audience. You know, Dave Fenoy, Joe Cipriano, Frank Rodriguez, Laurie Allen, Cedaring Fox, and Nicole Roberts all (laughs) there in the audience. Pat Fraley. I mean, you're all there. This is it. And so for me, I left it all out there. I had no regrets with the performance. I was thrilled with my ability to manage the stress under that situation. And I I sent an email of thanks to Rudy Gaskins, and I said to him, you know what, Rudy? I slayed some dragons. Because for the most part, I'm alone in this studio day after day working on copy. Sometimes I'm getting direction from a client or or an agent or or a producer. But most of the time, I'm directing myself. And I'm still getting work, so people are happy. But, you know, when you don't get a lot of feedback day to day, you sort of, you have moments of like, okay, am I doing this? Is this working? And to be able to go there in a situation like that and perform at that level and get the feedback and the compliments that I did afterward, it was very affirming. So what I want to impart to you, and I'm, I'm telling you this experience because it was a wonderful experience for myself, I'm just encouraging you to do the same thing. If there's an opportunity for you to push yourself a little bit, go ahead and do it. I must admit there was a part of me that I really wasn't focused on this part of the conference. But then I said, you know what? I bought the ticket. Let's play. Let's have some fun. Let's give it everything you've got. And I did. And I was so happy with myself. And I want to encourage you to do the same thing. That's the value of going to conferences is it gives you an opportunity to learn and to grow. And if there's an opportunity for you, take it. Go for it. Life's too short. It's all kind of wraps around this theme of being grateful and being thankful for what you have. And I just want to encourage you to do that. I don't know what else to say. I got um, a wonderful email, or actually it was a post, Before I get into that, again, I want to just encourage you, if you want to see the scripts that I used in making the final six, those PDFs are available to you with my performance notes, and I will put a link to the show notes for this episode where you can go and get a free copy of those. Please do that. Uh, It's my gift to you. So tying into that, I got a wonderful post on the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast from a a young man, I won't use his name, um, but he he wrote to me in response to my uh, my interview with Joe Bevilacqua, and uh, he listened to it, he really liked what was being said, and I'll just read some of the comments that he, or questions that he shared with me 
on the post, and then I'm going to comment on them. And he, he said, John, thank you so much. I really like what was being said. See, I'm new to voiceovers, and like you and Joe said, on the pay-to-play sites, it's hard to get noticed. Not only that, but he's always wanted to do his own thing. He's from Indiana. He's 21 years old. He's going to school for design and production, and he's currently trying to get an internship with a radio station. And he says he's writing because he wants to do more, and he knows in order to do that, you have to reach out. And now I'm going to read it like he's writing to me. So, quote, The thing I enjoy most is stories and creating something for people to enjoy, but I can't do it alone. My skills are voice acting and writing. I can't draw. I don't have a lot of computer skills and, well, just everything else that goes into making something. I've tried reaching out to people I know that can draw and I've proposed this to them and said, maybe we can do something and put it on YouTube or something. They always seem weirded out and I don't understand why. I'm trying to expand my skills by going to school, but I'm in the prerequisite stage of college and not learning what I want to learn. Now, I'm going to make some comments about all of this in, in a moment. I'm just going to finish up his, his post. I guess I'm asking, do you have any advice on how to connect or get people on board with doing something, actually doing something, not just going through our boring, ordinary life? It's killing me. I want to do something. I see people on YouTube doing something and voice actors doing projects after projects, and I want this, and everything is just slow. And I feel if I had help, if I can get a team and do something that I won't feel so blah and bored all the time. That's what you and Joe talked about, which was going out there and doing it. He has extreme talent. I think he's writing about Joe. He has extreme talent, though. He writes, produces, he can even draw. So unlike him, I need a team and I don't understand how to acquire them. Any advice you can give me, and then he gives me his email address. I want what you and Joe were talking about. Creating something yourself that people can enjoy and because that you yourself become a commodity. And I think he's talking about not wanting to become a commodity. And, you know, there's so much in that post. I'm going to back up a little bit. And I have a coaching client that I'm working with is right about the same age as this young man is. And he's expressing the same thing. It's like, you know, I'm in the prerequisite stages of college. I'm, I'm not taking classes in my major. I'm not, I'm not learning what I want to learn. If I could quote the gentleman who posted here, I'm not learning what I want to learn. My mom has an expression. She says that no experience is ever wasted. And I think the same can be said for education or courses or anything that we learn. Nothing that we learn is ever wasted. And what I said to this gentleman and what I've said to my other coaching client is, you know, (laughs) enjoy the process of learning. Let me share with you my reply. I said, dear so-and-so, I understand your frustration Finding motivated people to share your vision can be difficult. And candidly, pursuing a life where you create your own way can be lonely at times. So many people just want to settle for a job that they literally do not understand you. And I put understand in quotes. And that's okay. Others who pursue what they want in life will. They, we, are out there. And I've made this comment a number of times in that voiceover people are special. We have the guts and the desire and the passion to go after our goals and our dreams. And a lot of people think that we're nuts for doing so, but we're a small percentage of the population that's not willing to just settle. So I said, here's a couple of thoughts for you. Please go back and listen to the interview that I had with Joe Bevilacqua again. I think you'll hear that he's been at this a while and that patience and persistence are what got him success. It's what's gotten me success. This didn't happen overnight for me. I've been at this for 20 years, you know, and I, I was a lobbyist and if you, for the real estate industry. And if you know my story, you, you know that I was a meat cutter and I used that to pay for college. And was I a communications major in college? No. 
I was a history major and then became a political science major. All of those experiences have helped me in this uh, this career. Here's an example of what you're not learning what you want to learn actually is stuff you want to learn because it will help you down the road. So I took a botany course in college and I learned about xylem cells and phloem cells and parenchyma cells and basically that's the, the circulatory system of a plant. It's like the xylem cells take nutrients up into the plant, the phloem cells take stuff down to the roots, and the parenchyma cells, if my if memory serves, are the storage cells. They're basically the fat cells in a plant. So I had to do this voiceover for a corporation called Arborjet. And what they are is an injection company. They're a tree nutrient injection company where they drill holes into the tree and they inject nutrients into the, into the trunk of the tree to save the tree. And they're for trees that grow in an urban environment. You know, they have a sidewalk around them and their roots really can't travel very far because there's a street and a sidewalk and all that kind of stuff that gets in the way. So the trees get sick, but to keep the trees healthy, they inject this stuff in there. Well, I walk into the recording studio and there's a script and xylem is spelled with an X, xylem cells. You know what? My botany course in college helped me to know that. And then the next day I was doing the creature sounds for the Atari video game and I died 100,000 deaths in the studio the next day. That's what voiceover is. It's all kinds of different stuff. So the more stuff you're exposed to, the better off you are. So nothing is ever wasted. Let me go back to my notes here. Uh, This is going to take time, but it won't take forever. You can get this started sooner. Also, and I'll make this recommendation for you, Listen to episode 24. It's an interview with Mark Malkoff. It's a great lesson on persistence. Now, with respect to his frustration with not finding people that are willing to work with him, my recommendation is start hanging around different people. If the folks you're with don't share your vision, find people who will. In episode two of the podcast, I'm referencing a lot of previous episodes in this episode, but it all builds on itself. Episode two, I discover the power of association. Who you hang around with and spend time with matters. And then I go on and I give him some practical steps. You know, ask him if he's got an outline of what he wants his projects to be. Has he written it down on paper? Uh, it's an interesting thing. Computers are fine, but there's literally a magic, in my opinion, in taking the time to hand write things out with a pen on a piece of paper. Because changing the technologies, it kind of cements your goals in your subconscious. And the, then the subconscious can go to work finding solutions to your problem. When you have an outline, you can share something tangible uh, with prospective team members. And, you know, it's not just out there. You know, it's it's something they can look at and respond to, not just an idea in your head. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm coaching another young man who's in the same place as he is. This ge- gentleman is in college. He wants to do voiceover and sports casting, and I'm telling him the exact same thing. Enjoy this time and learn all you can and savor each moment in school because the time's going to fly by And I'm telling this guy this, and I really hope he takes it to heart, because I wish someone had told me this when I was 21. (laughs) And if someone did, I wasn't listening, and I really wish I had. And then I go on to tell him to do things that most won't do. You must behave and act in ways that most won't act and behave. Stop and be present to where you are right now. I had told him to stop reading this the post that I might reply back to him and take stock of where you are and what's going on around you and who you're with, the weather, what it smells like. Find something to appreciate in all of this. Take five minutes and do that. Turn off your smartphone for a day and see what that feels like. Feel the freedom. Try it. The world won't end. I promise you it won't. You know, it, it ties back to Thanksgiving and being thankful for what you have And even if you don't have exactly what it is that you want right now, be thankful for that feeling because that's the feeling that will propel you to continue to strive for your goals and your objectives. So in a way, be happy in your discomfort because that's what takes you to new levels. 
If we were completely satisfied, there would be no progress in anything. If we're satisfied, then we become complacent and then lazy. And then that's when stuff starts to fall apart. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me look at my notes here, see if I've covered everything. Uh, yeah, okay, so go to the show notes for this episode. Click the link to get the PDF for the performance notes and all my, my script analysis for the scripts that I did for the Travel Channel. Oh, and one other thing. If you are so inclined, I have put up a contribution button to the podcast. Uh, this podcast does take several hours a month for me to put these episodes together. And there are hosting costs, not only for the website, but also the audio. The audio is stored on another site so that it can stream to the hundreds of listeners that access the content at, a, at the same time. And so those things add up over the course of time. And so if you have it in your heart and your desire to help out the podcast in a way, you can make a contribution to the podcast. I've got a new button on the home site at VoiceOver Marketing Podcast. It's called Contribute. And uh, there are a number of ways for you to be able to do that. There are two options. You can become a member and you can join the loyal listeners who make the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast possible. And it's an automatic monthly donation of your choosing. And there are different levels. Uh, the first one starts at $3 a month, and it goes all the way up to $25 a month. And you can choose. If you choose to become a producer-level member, listeners who subscribe at the producer level at $10 a month, I'm going to send you a Mike lapel pin. And there's a little picture of Mike the microphone and every once in a while I come up with special marketing reports and if you choose to do that then you will you will get access to these marketing reports when I complete them they happen maybe two three times a year uh, but that's the producer level uh, and you can choose to do that and there's also an option there for you to cancel or unsubscribe your monthly membership right there on the page as well so if you find it in your heart to do that that would be great. The other thing is if you just want to make a one-time donation, there's a donation button there as well. And anything you may be able to contribute helps in the operation of the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast. So I want to thank you in advance if you choose to take advantage of that opportunity. And uh, if you join at the producer level, what are the different levels that I've set up here? I've got the raving fan level at $7 a month, the listener level at $3 a month, the producer level at $10 a month, and the executive producer level at $25 a month. Uh, if you do a producer level or above, we'll send you out the mic, the microphone button and any special marketing reports too so anyway thanks for your indulgence in listening to that message i talked to you last episode about gallagher how i interviewed him i've got a number of episodes recorded i just have to edit them i promise you they're coming i love putting this content out there so it's just a matter of me getting the time to go through it and clean it up and get it ready to rock and roll so listen if you're listening to this on thanksgiving i wish you a wonderful thanksgiving if you're listening to it after i hope you're grateful for what you everything you have in your life and i wish you a wonderful holiday season thanks again and i'll talk to you soon take care our program originates in the boston studios we hope you'll join us again. Until then, we bid you au revoir, keep your chin up, and the best of luck. Well, that's it for this episode of the Voice Over Marketing Podcast. If you like this podcast, please subscribe to it at voiceovermarketingpodcast.com so you'll get notices of new episodes. And please share it with your friends and colleagues in the voiceover world. Also, it would be a huge help if you'd like this podcast and rate it on iTunes to help keep it near the top of the list. Feel free to share your comments and questions about this episode and future topics you'd like discussed at voiceovermarketingpodcast.com. And if you'd like more information on one-on-one -on -one coaching with me and mastermind group opportunities where we focus on growing your business, feel free to drop me a line at my cyber assistance email address at mike at Thanks for listening. Now go out there and share your voice with the world.